What is going on, guys? We are back, and today we're going to be starting a new series playing with the brand new, extremely difficult, but also extremely cool mod pack, Create Above and Beyond. So you guys asked for it, and I am more than happy to deliver. So today we are going to be taking on the challenge of the Create Above and Beyond mod pack, which, like I said in the intro, is extremely difficult but it's also very cool. So just a fair warning for any of you that also want to take this challenge on too, it's probably not for the faint of heart or people who are not willing to put in a very large amount of work, at least when you're starting out. Speaking from experience so far, just to get to the point where we're at today, probably took a couple hours of some serious work. So definitely a little bit more difficult than playing vanilla or just basic modded Minecraft. But a brief overview of the pack for those of you that are not familiar because it came out a couple days ago. This pack is centered around create, but it's not just going to be create. So there's a lot of other mods in here, some supporting mods and some pretty big mods too. So as you can see in JEI, there are 53 pages. We're starting out with the boring vanilla blocks here. So that doesn't really give you a good idea of what's in here. But if you don't feel like looking at the description on the mod pack page itself, there's things like applied energistics. There's things like thermal series, occultism, a bunch of cool things that we can build alongside create to make some very cool contraptions that incorporate a bunch of different mods together. And I'm sure that will be really important as we progress through this series. But but alongside having all those cool mods in the pack with it, Create itself is very different. So if we take a look up here at some of the blocks we're going to be using today, a perfect example is the encased fan. Now, all of these are very basic, but encased fan should be very simple. Well, it's not so simple anymore. So this recipe right here should already look very foreign to you. It looks foreign to me. So we need the propeller, which of course is not anything out of the ordinary, but we need an andesite machine. And to make this, we need kinetic mechanisms. And to make this, we either need to set up a sequenced assembly, which is very cool, or we can do some crafting with this recipe right here. So you can already see making one encased fan is going to be like pulling out teeth. So again, I can't state this enough, very hard pack, but I am up for the challenge. So a lot of the recipes have been changed to make them way more difficult. So on top of the fact that you got to gather more resources to even get where you want to be, you're also expending more resources to make the things you want. So lots of time invested. Now, one last thing that I want to touch on before we get into the episode, and I'll do this very briefly. This is a quest based mod pack. So you can see that there is, in fact, a quest book. You can access it either from a hotkey or in your inventory up here. There's some cool introduction stuff to get you familiar with it. There's also a couple different overview sections as you progress through to the different tiers. They call them different chapters to get you all the way to the end and the end of this mod pack. We're going to space. So basically, this mod pack forces you to be Elon Musk, except you don't get to be rich. You don't get to have fancy cars. And instead, you're just going to go into a void out in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, not the coolest parts about being him. But yeah, we're, we're still kind of becoming him. But either way, the pack is a little bit different from regular quest based packs because it's not going to hold your hand the entire way. And it's not going to give you crazy rewards, but it is going to give you a good idea of where you need to go. But obviously, in the spirit of create, a lot of it is up to you. So you can see there's not a ton of tabs here, but there's a couple that walk you through different things and you'll unlock more as you go through these. But really, it's just there to help you out and give you an idea of progression because there is some progression in here. A lot of the machines that were not really hard to get before. Well, they're hard to get now. So you're going to be starting out with stuff that's really basic in order to progress to even medium tier stuff. And then to get to late game stuff, well, that's going to be pretty much near impossible, but we'll end up doing it eventually. Now, that's enough rambling from me because we have a lot of work to do. If you could not already tell, I want to jump into this pack head first. And so I went out and did a bunch of gathering. If that wasn't already given away by those intro clips, or the fact that I have iron armor and a full set of diamond tools. Now this chest right here contains all the things that I would consider to be valuable to me right now, which is mostly ores and then a bunch of andesite cobblestone and stuff like that. But you can see I did a fair bit of mining. Now, obviously, it looks like we have a lot of iron, but unfortunately, crushed iron ore only turns into three nuggets. So another part of the pack that maybe you want to pull my hair out, you have to do three times as much mining early on to get where you otherwise would be. 
but we're going to try and deal with that today by setting up ore processing. And that is why I have so much crushed iron ore that has yet to be cooked down because I want to get the most bang for my buck, which means I don't want to over process my ore until we get to the next stage. So right now, I'm going to smelt down whatever we need to make the machines necessary, and I'm going to leave the rest because we're going to be doing or doubling today. So going from three to six nuggets, really not that fancy, but it's going to save me a lot of time in the long run, and eventually it'll get better. Maybe one day we'll even make a whole ingot from each ore that we mine. <gasps> Right. Wouldn't that be amazing? Right. Such a novelty idea. <laughs> um, people who play expert packs all the time are probably wanting to like punch me in the face right now. I don't know if they're usually this bad, but either way, uh, we have all this stuff and we need to craft all of this stuff. Now, this looks excessive to make this, but I assure you it is not. I also had to gather a bunch of other things like kelp and clay and all that jazz and a bunch of flowers and things so that, again, we could make the stuff up here. So weird, 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 weird recipes. But what I'm going to do is put a montage of this together because it's probably going to take me like 20 minutes or more to make all of this, even though it's not that much. But I do want you guys to see the process because I will be having to put down the water wheels to make the press, to make the plates and the mixer to make the rubber so that I can make the belts and all that different stuff. I want you to get a good idea of what I'm doing. But at the same time, I don't want you to have to sit there and be bored out of your minds like I probably will be. I'm just kidding. I actually think it's a lot of fun, but it's going to be a while. So I think it's about time that I put on my sweaty try hard gamer pants and we cue the not so intense montage music. Okay, guys, so the crafting should be done. It took basically an entire Minecraft day, maybe a day and a half. It is a fresh day out, which is a perfect time for us to start with the building because we got some serious construction work to do. Now, this is the aftermath of this chest right here. I'm going to admit I kind of overshot it with the amount of crushed iron ore that I went and got when I was caving. But either way, it'll be nice to have in the end. Surprising, the limiting portion of this was oak. So I actually had to cut down a, a few additional trees and oh my God, the leaves are hanging around right now because of other trees. I'll deal with that later. I, I don't really care that much. I just want to get my ore processing so I can turn this sweet, sweet crushed iron ore into nuggets. And obviously this looks like a lot, but really this would be right here, one stack of iron and then two stacks. So this is like maybe two stacks of iron if I just cooked it down. So really not that much in the grand scheme of things, but it'll be like five when we end up processing it. Now, this is all the stuff right here. It took forever just to make this. So really not that much to show for the amount of work that I put in. I also accidentally made a mechanical mixer when really I needed the press with the basin to make the rubber to cook down to make the belt. So I wasted a bit of resources doing that because for some reason I saw basin and water and I just assumed it was a mixer instead of actually reading what was on my screen like an intelligent person. But we're good to grab out all this stuff and start setting this up. We'll also need some water and all that. But, you know, obviously that's uh, we have unlimited amounts of water right there. Now, I do want to say that we are homeless right now and we will be homeless for the entirety of this episode because I don't know what I want my home to look like yet. So we're just going to build this right here and then the home will be built around it eventually, probably. We won't be homeless forever, probably, but for now we will be. So it's just going to go right over here. And yeah, that's just how it's going to be. So the first thing, and I should grab out some building. That's, oh my gosh, why did I do that? I always forget that that's going to happen. I need to grab out some building blocks so that I can set this up. What did I, what did I dump in here? Did I dump something? No. Okay. So the funnel's right there. Okay. So we're going to set this up probably like uh, right here is good. Maybe. Yeah, that's probably good. OK, so the first important block is the millstone. And I guess to go over this, let me open up the quest book. So to give you guys an idea of what we're doing, 
This is the ore processing tab in the quest book. Now, these are quests, but you can see there's not really any rewards for them. But the idea of this is to help you map out what you're going to do to process your ore. And it has every option, every stage of the way. It looks like a mess, but the idea is that you travel from each one to another, and that'll tell you the options you have and what the yield will be. So starting out, we're going to complete this right here. The next one, we could either mine it and we just get one to one, or we get fortunate and get one or two from each mined ore. Now, obviously, we're just going to mine it. So that's going to give us crushed ore. And now we have a couple options. We could smelt it to get the three nuggets, which I've already complained about. We could induction smelt it, which is way far off in the future to make one of these things. But that would get us nine to twenty seven. We could mill it to get three. We could crush it to get three to six and we could pulverize it to get six. Now, you might be thinking one to three is not better than one to three, but this goes right to nuggets, whereas this goes to dust. So we're going to do this because we can't make either of these yet. In the future, we will, but it kind of goes basic, medium, hard. Now we have dust, so we're good here. Now we have a couple options. We could wash it to get two. We could smelt it to get one or we could melt it to get three, melt it again to get three or superheated mix it to get six. Now, this is great because with both of these, you can get 36 nuggets. So that's awesome. But right now, the one I'm going to go with is washing because it's better than smelting, but we don't need to worry about melting, which means we can fully automate this with melting. You're going to need some form of heating, which means you're going to have to supply it with some form of fuel. And right now we don't have the capability of automating a tree farm to get us the fuel. So we're going to wash it for full automation. That gets us to nuggets, which then we are going to manually compact because I don't have the stuff to make a brass funnel, which is needed to appropriately pull things out of the basin after they've been pressed and all of that jazz. So we're going to leave it at nuggets. And if we go through the chain we've made now, they have made it so that in this pack, you can just kind of calculate out what you're going to get. So one times three, so three times two, so six. So we are leaving at one to six. Every ore gets us six nuggets. So that's how you can figure it out. Long winded explanation of that, but that's exactly what we're doing. So we're starting out with the millstone. We're going to put down a shaft here. Now I might need to make the, the create wrench, but we'll, we'll see if we can get around doing that. So we're going to put down one of our belts right here, and this is going to dump onto that belt. Now I'm just going to use a hopper so that it can kind of build up a backlog and dump it from the bottom here. It's also a little bit more cost effective than using an andesite funnel right now. So this will dump out the dust onto this belt right here, and then we need to wash it. So the way we're going to go about washing it is using the encased fans, but they're going to be going down onto the belt here, which I think looks the nicest. So we are going to have them here, here and here with the water. So the fans are going to be above it. So let's hop up here and let's see if I can remember how these orient if I can get them. Yep. So we want them going down so I can avoid making the wrench right now. It's not that I have anything against the wrench, but I forgot it in my list of things to craft. And so we're just going to pretend like it's not there. Now we need to put down our water, but for now, the way we're going to contain that is using trap doors. So I think this looks really, really nice. You put the trap doors like this. You can open them up if you want, but we're going to put down some on the back here too. We can close those. And then eventually we are going to have something over here. And I guess we can do that right now. We're just going to have some chests over here for stuff to go into. So like that and like that. And the reason I'm doing this now, even though we're not even remotely close to this part of the process yet, is again to block in the water. So we're going to put an andesite funnel right onto this chest. And basically we're going to have the dust come out come along this belt right here. It's going to get washed by the encased fans. It's going to go really slow. I'm just letting you guys know this is going to go really, really slow right now. The fans take forever to wash. I don't know if they made it take longer in this pack to wash stuff, but it feels that way. But they'll wash them. It'll be a continuous stream and then it will come in here. Now, typically when I was starting out, I would make it so that you have like a brass funnel here with a filter so that only things that have been fully washed can go in. And then this system would not need to be this big and it would just allow itself to stop until it's done washing and then proceed. But because we again don't have access to the brass funnels yet, we need to make sure that there's enough fans here to wash the stuff. So that's why we have three. It also looks pretty cool, right? It's going to look like a big system here, which is great. So we can kind of get rid of these and you can see right now where the water is going to go right in here. 
So the one thing is I want to put it down on the encased fan because I guess uh, I didn't know this, but I guess you can like waterlog trap doors even. So when I was planning out how I was setting this up, I didn't understand why there was water spilling out the back of it. And it was because I water <laughs> I waterlogged the trap doors, putting down the water. So it will be contained in here if we place it down properly. So like that, that should fill in the center and then we can just kind of refill our buckets there. So it's in there now. If we close these, you can see how it's going to look. And then I think a nice place to put another one down just to make it look nicer is like right over here. And I think that looks pretty cool. So it's it's kind of, it's coming along, right? We can get rid of this and we can put like wood down there or something later and we can get rid of that. And that's the progress we made for the first day. So we should probably sleep right now because I have not lit up anywhere around here in my homelessness area um, because, you know, I, I never do that. I don't know why I never light things up, but at least we have a bed. I got this bed. Sad story. Just a little bit of a tangent. I know we're efficiency, right? We're go, go, go. Um, <laughs> when I was down in the mine, when I found an abandoned mine shaft, I was in there for so long that I collected enough string. I broke my sword collecting the string, but I collected enough string to just make the wool, not realizing there were sheep like right over there. So Okay, so we have the millstone going. Now we need to put stuff into the millstone, which is making me realize I need to make another hopper. So totally forgot about that somehow. So we'll grab out our iron and our remaining like sad, pitiful amount of oak logs in here. And this is really making me miss, honestly, the Enigmatica 6 series already um, because I <laughs> in that world, I have unlimited resources. So yeah, that's kind of, I'm being very reminiscent of that right now and missing it, but we're going to put down our hopper here and then a chest right up here. Now you could kind of put this down however you want, but I think it looks cool that it's kind of all in a line right here like this. So input chest, drop into the millstone, drop onto the belt into this chest over here with all the nuggies. So that's really the basis for this setup. Uh, now we need to get the power going to it. And so this part is a little bit more complex with how I set it up because the speed of it is really important because we don't have a ton of stress units to work with. But at the same time, we need to make sure this is going slow, but we don't want this going slow. So I'm trying to, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully remember how I actually set this up, but if I recall correctly, we are going to be putting down a gearbox right here. And obviously we need a cog wheel to spin the millstone right there. So that's just going to flat out spin that. So we got that going there and we're just going to slap down the water wheels over here. Now, I think it's going to look really cool having the water wheels like right next to this. So let's orient them properly. No funny thing. And this is uh, so I know, obviously, you can get the water wheels to be like 320 stress capacity and spin at 20 RPM or something. Um, if you have soul sand, we don't have that yet. So we're going to be at 256 at 16, I believe. Is it 16? I think I can't remember the, the numbers for this. It's been a little bit since I played with create, but 256 stress capacity. But the funniest thing is people in my first episode, when I put these down and put the water on so many comments where people saying it doesn't spin at the right speed, it's overstressed because they didn't realize that they would have the water going from this over and they didn't realize that the water needs to be caught by the the I don't know what you'd call them the fins the the blades of the turbines the water wheels whatever um they had it going the wrong way and they actually coded it in create the devs did so that if you have the water going the wrong way but covering the same number of faces it gives you less speed is so really well done by them but oh my gosh people were just <laughs> so confused by that so we need to get the water down up here it seems i need a couple uh more of the trap doors i'm expending the last of my of my oak logs so let's hope there's nothing else that i'm missing out on but this will be a nice way to kind of contain the water over here and again we're going to make sure that we're not going to waterlog the trap doors so we'll just get this spinning around here and we need to put it down let me get up here and we need to put it down on top of those there we go so get a little bit more so we can put it down on top of the other one Again, making sure to not click it on the trap doors. And there we go. So the millstone is running at the appropriate speed for itself. Direction doesn't matter. We don't care about that for this. We care about it for everything else. So the next thing that we need to take care of is getting the rotational power 
up to the encased fans. I guess both really kind of happen at the same time with getting the rotational power from over here to these. Okay, so rapid fire gearing time to see if I remember this. So we're going to put down cogwheel right here, another cogwheel right here. We're going to need a large cogwheel right there. So I think we need to, I think this is one of the areas where I need to get rid of this tra trap door. And we're going to have to let the water spill out for a second here. But we're going to get rid of the trap door. And then we are going to, oh no, let me, let me put it on the corner. There we go. Block it. Cool. Very nice. <laughs> get the, get that down there. Then we are going to be putting down uh, another cog wheel on the back of this because we are, nope, that's not a cog wheel. We are going to be gearing this up. So another cog wheel on the back of this, gearing it down. Sorry. We're going to be gearing this down. So then another cog wheel right here. And then I believe, I believe, let's check the direction of rotation for this. Can we just use, nope, we need another vertical gearbox right here. So we got our vertical gearbox right there. So now this is going in the right direction and it is going snail's pace slow, real, real slow. I mean, this thing is like molasses right here, but that's what we need because we need the washing time for it. So it's kind of slow but it's fully automated. So I'm just going to load this chest up and we'll be fine. Um, but <laughs> if for some reason this chest ever gets overflowing, first off, you guys need to tell me to seek professional help. Okay. Because if I ever mine enough to fill this thing, I need to be put in a hospital. But if that happens, yes, then this system is going to be no. See, this is Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's just fix this. But uh, this system is, did it, it messed this whole thing up right here because of the water, it, but the water messed this whole thing up. You see? Okay. Wow. That grass grew really fast. Look at this. I'm trying to make it look nice around here and it just messed it all up. But yeah, this system will run into issues and we'll have to sit around and wait for a while if I fill up this chest, but that should never happen because I'm not an insane person. So here we are. Now we need to come up here and we need to put down shafts on each of these and we're going to use a belt. Now I would usually use a chain drive, but again, we are in poor personville right now. So we're making do with what we got. So we got the belt up here. This will make all these go in the same direction. And then we need to vertical gearbox it twice. So let me see if I can place this down right. Vertical gearbox there and vertical gearbox there and then get out the shafts that I don't have. I guess there's more. I made more over here. Did I make more? I have more in here somewhere. There they are. I'm blind. Okay. I knew I had more somewhere, but let's please be the right direction. Please tell me I didn't screw this up, please. So we're going to get rid of this. I'm going to put down. Well, I guess this is actually pretty well contained if we do that. Yeah. Nice. Haha. -ha. Super smart. Yeah, it is. Okay. Are they blowing down? They are. They're blowing down. Particle effects coming down. That's what we like to see. And they're not going too fast, which is great because another thing that, you know, is it's just the speed as far as I'm aware, unless they change something, making these go faster does not wash things faster. So it'll make them wash things further away, but it doesn't make them wash things faster. So I think the setup is done now. Now, we are definitely not using both of these water wheels right now to their full capacity. I believe we need just one of these. I need to make the engineering goggles. Uh, so we can see kind of what each is using, but yeah, we're not running this fast enough for that to be an issue. We can always speed it up in the future if I wanted to extend it like one more or something, or we had a brass funnel over here, but really it doesn't matter because we're going to use up pretty much all this space just to wash it. I think it finishes around like here on the third fan. So, but now it is time to dump all of this stuff happily back in here. Oh, well, we don't have enough room, but there we go. Well, good enough. Um, we need to really make more chests. This is going to kill me until we get our storage system set up, but it's time to grab out all of our crushed ores and it's, oh man, this is going to feel so good. This is going to feel so good and so right. Is that everything? Is that everything? Also, I found this, which I thought was funny because it's like a if you look at the uses for this, it is, or the recipe for this, it's something that I like definitely shouldn't have. I found this in a chest in the mine shaft. I think there's also these ores. Let me just talk about this for a quick second. I'm like a tease telling you guys we're about to process ore. but if we look at the ores in here, there is one ore. where is it? Uh, is it actually, do they show it in here? It's like the random randomium or that sounds really dumb, but it is. Um, 
randomium ore, right? Okay, so this just like drops a random block. So I got, I think this might've been one that I got from it. I got a bunch of junk, but then I also got this. I got a diamond wand from it. So that was sweet. Um, I also got some random and Edelwood lava bucket. So I don't know if this is like, it's got, so it's fancy stuff. I don't know, but I found some of those, but I found this thing either from the randomium or, or in one of the chests. And I thought it was funny because I was like, I definitely should not have that right now, but no, no more being a tease. Let's get it going. Okay. It's going. Particles are happening. Things are being done. Now we can flip these up to watch it too. You know, it's kind of like we're sitting watching like someone making our subway sandwich or something. Please work. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, it worked guys. Oh, it worked. Everyone, everyone did just everyone take a bow, take a bow. Obviously this is like Bush league for create. I think it looks nice. I think it looks really nice. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that. And you guys can pat me on the back too. Um, but I think it looks nice, but this is like really Bush league when it comes to create, this is like pre episode one stuff. If you were doing like a create series, but I'm happy with it for this because this took me hours of work to get stuff for crafting, setting it up, planning it out, but it works. And over here we have our nuggets. So I'm just, I'm thrilled with this guys. I am really happy that we have this going. This will suffice for a very long time with ore processing until we can get, just to give you guys an idea. If we take a look, we're really going for the next one would be like crushing wheels. Cause we can maybe get six from those. So if we take a look at this, right, obviously we need the mechanical crafters to make both of these, to make these, we need the brass machine to make the brass machine. We need a precision mechanism and brass casing. So obviously we need brass sheets, which means we need brass ingots, which means we need to do the, where is it? It's the only way to do this with making it in here. It looks like, can we seriously only do it with that? Cause we have the induction smelter, but we can't make that. So then we need to make this. Wow. There's not the same recipes before. So we need to then make it in here, which means we need to do some Tinker's Construct stuff and presumably mix this in there. Can you mix the, in making molten brass in there? We could also mix it in the mixer, but yeah, so we need to do that to make that, but, um, and then we need the precision mechanism and to make the precision mechanism, we cannot craft this like the kinetic mechanism. We had to do the automation of the deployers to set it up using screwdrivers and electron tubes and stuff. And honestly, we should probably automate this too, because it will save us resources in the long run. So a lot of stuff coming, but this will get us the most bang for our buck for a very long time. So I apologize if this video was like too tutorial esque. still, it's really hard for me to get out of that mindset with the create stuff, but we're going to mainly focus in this series on setting up the contraptions. So I will try to make it less tutorial esque. We'll try to go a lot faster on this stuff, but I do apologize if it takes some adjusting, because if you guys don't know, I have done two different series that are basically tutorial series on create. And so I'm sitting here like trying really hard not to do that, but I'm just loving this. I'm feeling, it feels so good. Now you can see there is a backlog forming here. So eventually this will stop because we'll have a backlog in the millstone and the backlog here and then up here. So, but I think that's going to be it for today, guys. So please let me know if you are excited for this series. One quick, quick, quick update for those of you that stuck around. Enigmatica 6 is not over. It is still going to be running alongside this for an extended period of time. The goal here is that I think Batania is probably done as a series. Unfortunately, I keep trying to do these magic mod series for the surviving with and, you know, a lot of people request them and then no one watches them. And it gets sad when people comment on my videos saying, oh, more this magic mod series, where's the other ones? And so I tried for as long as I could, but it's really demotivating. So for those of you that like this series, I apologize. I think it's coming to an end. If I get motivation in the future or people for some reason and just start enjoying magic mods again, then we will go back to it. But I think the running series for now are going to be Enigmatica 6 while I finish up that series. I think Ragnamod is looking like it's probably going to be the next one that you guys wanted. Sort of unconventional mod pack that a lot of people wanted to see. So right now, that's my tentative plan for that when we finish that in probably like five to ten episodes. And then this series is going to run alongside that. So hopefully one episode of each every week, maybe here and there it'll get mixed up. But and then this series is going to run with the goal of being speeding through this 
and seeing how we do at an expert slash challenge pack. But I just wanted to put people's mind at ease for those of you that are worried the Enigmatica 6 series might end because I just asked about what we should do after. We are not finishing it. I just couldn't resist playing this pack. And I got comment after comment after comment of people wanting to see this. But again, enough rambling for me at the end of the video. For those of you that stuck around, I appreciate it. But that's going to be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on a future one as they come out every Monday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also be sure to go drop a like for the hours that I spent mining to prep for this episode. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later. You know, I uh, I think we might need more more furnaces for this one. And I don't really like that. I hate that. <laughs> hey, babe, do you want to go out and get some uh, chicken nuggets from McDonald's? I'm really craving them after my video.